So in this video, what I want to have a look at are what's known as Copilot Actions, which are part of Copilot Studio and allow the agent created with Copilot Studio to take autonomous actions, so automated actions here. So what I've done is I've created uh, an agent in the typical style here, and this is the end result. So my agent is called Bill. You'll see that uh, Bill has details. It has some knowledge sources. It has some actions, some triggers, topics, as we expect normally. Now, the key point here is if we want our Copilot agent to act autonomously, we're going to need a trigger. What's going to cause this agent to actually jump into action? Now, in this case, what I've done is I've set up a trigger that will activate the agent when a new email arrives. Okay, So we go in here and we would create a new trigger. And that trigger will be based on an app action. Typically, uh, it's going to be based on what we've seen in the Power Platform. So you'll see here that we have our uh, featured capabilities. We've got a library full of uh, trigger options here. We can also search. So there's a lot more than what you necessarily see here. You can go in and do a search. And you'll notice these are very familiar to the Power Platform. So in this case, I've created this trigger here. So let me just select that and just show you what it looks like. In essence, the trigger is just a power platform, um, you know, automation, a flow. And the idea here is that uh, we can then use that to kick our Copilot Studio agent into action. So let's go in and have a look at that when it comes up and display and we get an idea of what's happening here. Now, we'll see that we have a familiar option of when the email arrives. You'll see that we can... Uh, look at the parameters here so we can go in and look at any custom parameters there and you'll see that I have customized it so that the trigger will be whoops the trigger will be uh, when an email is received to my user or CC to my user so that's really all I've set there but I also have the settings I also have the code view if I want it and about so on so that's going to be the trigger so when a email arrives then it's going to hand off to the second op, which is the interesting one, which is part of Copilot Studio. So if we go in here, it says send the prompt to the specified Copilot. So if we select that, you'll see here that um, it's going to allow us to select the Copilot we've created. So that's Bill. And you'll see the parameters that we can uh, pass in. But really what we want to pass in is the content. So we're telling the Copilot agent to use the body of the email uh, from our trigger. So really that's all it is. Now, I think one of the limitations that I have when I was building this is I don't quite understand how the trigger then, you know, the information gets processed. But in this case, all we want is for the email to be triggered and for the content from the body to be passed off to our Copilot agent who can then make the decisions. Now, if we go back here and have a look at our description, now this is where our description is uh, really, really important here. So the idea is, is that we need to provide instructions to our agent to tell the agent what to do. So you'll see here that the instructions say when the agent will, the agent will read emails sent to the user. So we've already created that in the trigger, but the key one here about sending emails is this second line here, which says the agent will reply to any received emails on behalf of the user using the action to send an email v2. So this is the criticality around actually taking action from the results of any Copilot AI generation here. So that's where we scroll down here and we'll see that we have actions. Now you'll see my action here that I have the ability to send an email. So again, these are very much like um, Power Platform style flows. If we go in there, you'll see that we have a library, we have a list, we have the ability to create new actions. Those new actions are built on Power Automate flows, all right? So all of that uh, is available to us. We can create custom connections, APIs, and all that sort of stuff there. Now, if we go to actions here on the menu bar across the top, we'll be able to look at our action in detail here. You'll see that we can 
turn it on or turn it off or enable it, you'll see here that is triggered by the agent. So what that means is, is that when the agent needs to send an email, it will use this action. So if we want the agent to act autonomously, we have to give it the actions or the processes it can use to act autonomously. And I need to give it how to send an email here. So you'll see here that we can go in and delete it and so on. So that's how we can create the action there. If I click on the action, I'll get more details about it. Now, generally, if we define our action, you know, fairly simply, keep it simple, like sending an email, there's not a lot of additional parameters that we have to go in and add to our action. But we actually can get quite granular and we can get quite clever with some of the things uh, that we can do with our action. But the main point is, is to make sure the name and the display name match what you put in your description is what I found personally. So in this case, I've made sure the description is send an email bracket V2. We give it a description again. With the, another thing that I found to work well here is we say that the agent can use this action to respond to emails and notify the user. So that's going to kind of tell the AI Copilot Studio that this agent can use this action to send emails, which is what we want. The other one to note here is the end user authentication. I want to have the authentication set as the copilot author, so that will um, prevent any authentication issues, but you can vary that. You can set the user authentication if you want. The connector we're going to use here is the Office 365 Outlook connector. The status is on and it is enabled. Now, if we go into inputs, you'll see here that we can basically add inputs, we can customize this, but generally what we want to do is leave this to be dynamically filled with the best options. That means the agent, uh, the Copilot Studio agent, is going to make a decision about what is the best input to use in this case. So not a lot that we have to do there. Same with the outputs. You'll see once again that we can add different responses, but generally there's nothing we need to do here the agent will work out how to go in and do that so up here you'll see we can also look at the code editor uh, if we want to do that so that is uh, again available to us there now if we go back into our actions here you'll see that we can add an additional action so just let me show you what that looks like so again i would go in here and i would you know select uh, an option let's say we do the weather one here uh, we could select that and then follow the bouncing ball to go in and you know kind of set that up. But I've set up the one to uh, basically send uh, an email. And that then, I've made sure that the agent knows about that action in the description. I've also made sure that when I describe that action inside its settings, I've let um, it know that the agent can also use that action. So I've sort of got two ends of the spectrum here. The agent knows about the action in its description, and then the action also knows that the agent can use it to uh, perform you know any actions that are needed there okay so you'll see here that this looks very much like a you know a standard microsoft flow here and here's where we would go in and set those individual options and then save it uh, and then start using it so the idea here is is i would suggest in my case what i found to be very very important here is a couple of things firstly in the instructions you need to make reference to the action that you're going to use. So try and keep those exactly the same. So I'm going to use an action called send an email to send emails. And I have that action already defined down the bottom here. I've also got the trigger. So when will this agent jump into life? So that's going to be when new email replies. Now the final option to make all of this kind of work together and gel together is this option here called orchestration, which you need to make sure is enabled. So what orchestration is going to do for you is it's going to kind of bring all the pieces together. It's going to look at your description and say, aha, okay, I want to receive an email. When's that going to happen? That's going to happen via the trigger. When I get an email, this is how I deal with it. Oh, you want me to send an email. How do I do that? Oh, I use the action you've already created called send an email v2. Got it. That's what I'm going to use. So the idea here is it's not like a normal coding program where you write something end to end and all of it is defined nicely in code. Part of this is we sort of put the pieces together and we say, OK, we will trigger the um, automation of this agent this way. 
and that will create a bunch of information which we will hand off to the orchestration engine and the agent will look after that. When it needs to, it will take its result from whatever it's generated and use this action to send the email. So there's no sort of code in the middle to sort of tell the agent, you know, do this, get this result, then send this through. So a bit potentially hard to understand when it comes to traditional programming, but the concept here is we need to tell the agent you know, how to kick off, how to run autonomously, then we need any actions. In this case, I wanted to send an email, so I'm going to give it that capability by creating the action, and then I'll make sure that my orchestration is then turned on, so that will bring all the pieces together for me. So the example here is, is you'll see here that I've received a new email here, and I've asked about DSPM for AI. So I've sent myself, uh, I've sent this user uh, an email about. So that should have triggered off our agent. So if we go back in here and we have a look at our activity, we should see the fact that we do indeed have activity. That means the trigger has been enacted. All right, so see here today, this is the last one. I select that. This is showing us activity. What's basically happened here? So we've got that trigger. So when an email has received, that's kind of what it looks like. And then it's processed it created an answer and then it's sent that via email and that's the result. So we can see all that in the activity map. If we go down here, we can also look at the transcript, which can give you a bit more information if you want, but typically the trans, uh, transaction maps all we need. So we'll find all that information in activity. So now that we know that a trigger um, email has been received, that the trigger has been uh, executed here, and the agent then has looked at its knowledge sources as it would normally, and then it has actually used the action we created to send an email as well. We should be able to go back into our emails. If we go into sent items, indeed we see that here is the response from the agent uh, in response to that um, DSPM for AI, all right? So it's not particularly well formatted. We can update that. We can fix that with the description of the environment, but we've seen that that whole process has completed. So in a nutshell here, what I've done is I've created an agent as you would normally. The important thing is if I want it to be autonomous, the first thing is, is okay, I need to define a trigger. In this case, the trigger is the starting point is when a new email arrives. And we can go in there and you'll see that we can, you know, go in and test that much like we would uh, a Power Automate if we want. We can actually edit this in Power Automate as well to verify that it works. Once we have a trigger, then we go back to our instructions and make sure that our instructions match that trigger. In this case, you know, when an email is received, I want you to basically process that information and then any actions that you want the agent to take after the trigger, we need to define closely in our instructions. So you'll see here that I, again, have defined that action there, and I go down and I have an action in there that matches that, which again, I set up like a Power Automate flow. And then the final piece of the puzzle is to make sure that this orchestration option is enabled so that the AI can say, oh, when this trigger happens, right, get an answer, I can do that, then what do you want me to do? Oh, you want me to send an email, how can I do that? Here's the action that I can do that. Now, when that actually happens to track all that down, you can go into the activity and then click on the particular activity item there to get an idea of exactly what the process has been, whether it's actually worked and the variables inside that. The final, final piece is to make sure that you do publish any of the results that you have. So once you finish building your agent, you can test it manually over here if you wish. You can go in and you can publish that so that becomes available to yourself or to anybody else in your organization. So really simple and straightforward. Now, the key point for me was to understand that the idea is, is that when we actually create a trigger, for example, what's happening here is I don't have to code from the point of receiving the email to actually sending it. Basically, all I need to do is tell the AI what the trigger is, what's going to kick it off, and then basically say, okay, 
when this happens, take all the information from the trigger and pass it to the AI agent. And then because that generative option, orchestration option has been enabled, the agent's going to work out what to do with it. So that's kind of where I got a little bit confused because I thought, oh, where's the programming step to then go out and send an email and get the result? But basically all I do, as you see here, is trigger it and then I hand off the content to the AI uh, agent here. And because I have this orchestration capability enabled, the AI is going to be smart enough to say, oh, I've received this trigger and this information. Let me process it, get an answer for it. And then, oh, I need to send it. And again, the information about doing that is in the instructions. How do I send it? That sending capability has been defined in actions. I'm going to use that and it all works well. So that's kind of the difference I've found between using um, the actions concept in Copilot Studio. It is a bit different from writing code line by line and following everything. You kind of hand off some of the responsibility to the agent to let it work out exactly what it needs to do and how to do it. Now, it can prove challenging when you come to doing uh, debugging and those sort of things as well, but I found it to work pretty well. The simple answer is, um, is keep it simple, grow it out, make sure each step works, and then add on to it rather than trying to do one uh, big uh, agent, uh, automated agent at once. So hopefully that's a bit of a shared experience I've had with Copilot agents and actions, getting it to work in your environment. Again, take it slowly, build out, but remember to look at the analytics to make sure that it does work. And the best piece of advice I can give you is make sure that your actions that are mentioned in the instructions here match exactly the name of the instructions so the agent knows exactly what to do. So with that, you probably should be able to quickly and easily create any actions that you need. So thank you very much for watching the video.